Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Andy and in today's video we're going to look at how to display multiple plots in a single matplotlib figure. We will see how to set up subplots to include histograms and scatter plots that we have seen in my previous video. There are two main methods for adding subplots to a matplotlib figure. The first is using add underscore subplot and my favourite way is using subplot to grid. In the following Jupyter Notebook section we're going to see how to build a static dashboard figure from a core data that was acquired from the Evolve field in the Norwegian North Sea. So let's hop over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how to create this plot. Here we are within our Jupyter Notebook and the first step as we always do is import our libraries that we're going to use within this session. And the libraries that we're going to use are Pandas for loading and storing our CSV data and Matplotlib for data visualization. Once the libraries have imported we can then load in our data using PD which is the abbreviation for pandas that we've declared in the previous cell, followed by read underscore CSV. We can then pass in the text string of where the CSV file is located and its file name. When we run these two cells, we can see a quick view of the data frame. We can see the first five rows and the last five rows. And we can see that we have several columns here. First, we have the depth column, which has been depth adjusted to account for depth differences between logging depths and the driller's depth. We then have the original depth, the core run number, and the sample number. We then have a variety of measurements with our permeabilities here, then porosity, followed by oil and water saturations of the core plug, and then finally we have the measured grain densities. Don't worry too much if you're not familiar with this data, as the techniques I'm going to show you can be applied to any data set. Now we can move on to creating our figure with the subplot. The first step is to set up our figure, which is done by typing fig, which, an which is an abbreviation for figure, ax for our axes, and that is equal to plt.subplots and then within the brackets we pass in our figure size. So I've set the figure size to 10 by 10 for this example which should give us a decent size plot to view within our Jupyter Notebook. We then need to add our individual subplots. For this we will need five so we'll have two tall plots which will display our measurements with depth and then three smaller square plots to show a scatter plot and two histograms of data from the data frame. So for this we will need to create a free by free grid. We can then define our axes by typing AX1 for our first axis and that is equal to plt.subplot to grid and then we pass in a shape argument and we will set this to free by free. So that's three rows by three columns. We will then pass the location for our first axis which will be 0, 0, so it will start in the top left of the figure. And as we want axis 1 to be a tall plot, we then need to say that it spans all three rows. So if I type in row span is equal to 3. When we run this, we will see that we have our first subplot. And now we can't see the rest of the figure just yet, but we can see that our first subplot will appear here. We can then copy and paste this row, and we just rename this to AX2 for our second axis, and then we increment the location. So we've got the row number and then the column number. So I will set this to one, and again, keep the row span to three. So when we run that, we can now see that we have two vertical plots, and we can keep going with the rest of the axes. So AX3 will be our first scatter plot, so plt.subplot to grid and we will say that the shape is equal to three by three. So this maintains our overall structure of the figure. But for the location, we're going to set this to zero, two. So that will appear in the first row and the third column along from the, the top left-hand side of the image. And if we run that, we can then see that we have a square subplot on our figure. And we can repeat this for our fourth and fifth axes. And what we change is the numbers for the axes, and then we change the location. So we will now keep the column number the same, but we will increment the row number. Row one, two, and three. And when we run this, we now have our final setup for the figure, where we have our two tall plots where we're going to plot data against depth, and where we have our scatter plot histogram and a, another histogram as well. So now let's start adding some data to our plot. So the first plot we're going to create is our core porosity versus depth or our CPOR column from the data frame. And to do that we to call upon AX1 that we've created above and type in AX1.scatter and then we need to pass in our, our columns from the data frame. In this case we will pass in CPOR and we will pass in depth. So I will also add in our marker, we'll make this a small 
circle and we'll also set the color to red. And when we run this, we will, we will see that we now have data within our plot. However, the y-axis is inverted how, how we look at these logs. We usually start from the shallowest measurement at the top and then the deepest measurement at the bottom of the plot. So we need to set up some limits and we will also apply some titles to the data. So I will set the x limit from 0 to 50 and we will set the y limit in reverse order going from 4010 to 3825. And this will allow us to invert our y-axis. I will also add a title and we'll call this core porosity. And we will also add the grid to our subplot. So when we run this, we now see that we have a subplot, a tall plot here with core porosity as the title, our depths going from shallow to deep, and then we also have our, our data points from the core porosity versus depth. So we can then repeat this so that we can have our core permeability on, on the plot as well. We can easily do that by copying and pasting and then just changing the axis reference from 1 to 2. We then need to update the, the curve and we will use CKHG from the data frame and we'll change the marker to blue. We need to then change our limits so that we're going from 0 0.01 up to 10,000. We will keep the depth range the same and we will change the title to permeability. As our permeability is usually measured on a logarithmic scale, we need to tell matplotlib to plot the x-axis on a log scale. And now we run that and we have our core permeability points on the plot. We can see that we have high permeability intervals here on the right hand side and our low permeability intervals here. We need to add in our core porosity versus core permeability cross plot. And we can do this by adding our third axis, which is ax3.scatter. So we need to define the x axis, which will be CPOR, and then we need to define the y axis, which will be CKHG, our core permeability. I've set the marker to a dot, and then we can set the alpha or the transparency to 0.5. We need to set up some of the X and Y limits as well as the titles and labels. And also as our permeability is logarithmic, we need to set the Y axis this time to semi-log. We will now set up the, the limits, which we will, we will set the range similar to what we have on the plot previously. We can then specify the X label, which will be core porosity, and then in brackets we'll add in a percentage as that's what the, the units are. And then we will set the Y label to core permeability and the units of MD, which is melodarsis. We will also add the grid into this one by adding ax3.grid. And then when we run this, we now have our poroperm scatter or cross plot on the top right. And from this, we usually derive a regression equation that we can then use to predict permeability from our log porosity, which is more continuous compared to our core data, which is discreetly sampled. Now we can move on to adding the histograms of our core porosity and our core grain density. And again, this is just done by adding AX4, and we will keep this one brief, which is hist, and then we pass in our DF, and then we will pass in CPOR, set the bins to 30, Assign an edge color to black so that we can see the individual bars and then we will set the color to red. And finally, just to change the, the appearance, we will set the alpha or the transparency to 0 0.6. We then need to give it a label for our X axis by adding ax4.setX label and we will pass in core porosity. And there we have our histogram, which is in red, which ties in with the, the data over here on the left for our core porosity versus depth. So we can duplicate the code that we have here for AX4 and make it AX5 by and then change the, the reference from CPOR to CGD, which is our core grain density. So first we change it from AX4 to AX5. We then update the X label so that it says core grain density. 
and we will also change the color from red to blue, leave the alpha at 0 0.6, but then we need to change the reference from the data frame from CPOR to CGD. You can run this, and then we get our subplots for each of these measurements. So we have our core porosity here on the first subplot, our core permeability on the second subplot, which is also on a logarithmic scale, we can see here. And over on the right, we have some, some information about our poroperm relationship, and our distribution of our core porosity and our core grain density down the bottom. And there we have it, we've seen how to use the subplot to grid function from matplotlib to create a visualization of our core data on a single figure. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up by hitting that like button. And if you want to be updated when more videos are uploaded to this channel, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you want to know more about how to create some of the plots that we've seen today, such as our scatter plots or histograms, you can check these videos out here. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye for now.